Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by the sun of York, and all the clouds that lowered upon our house, the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious reefs, a bruised arms hung up for monuments, a stern alarms changed to merry meetings, a dreadful marches to delightful measures, grim visaged war has smoothed his wrinkled front, and now instead of mounting bartered steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of a loot. But I, that am not shaped for spot of tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking glass, I that am rudely stamped and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time, and that into this breathing world scarce half made up, and that so lamely and unfashionably that dogs bark at me as I halt by them, why I in this weak piping time of peace have no delight to pass away the time unless to spy my shadow in the sun and discount of mine own deformity. And therefore, since I can't prove a lover, <laughs> To entertain these fair spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain <laughs> and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions, dangerous by drunken prophecies, libels, and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate, the one against the other. And if King Edward be as ju true and just as I am subtle, false, and treacherous, this day should Clarence closely be mooed up about a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs the murderer shall be. Thy thoughts down to my soul. Clarence, come. 